Hello Cyberspace, my name is Garrett Mills and welcome to episode 9 in my PHP development tutorial series. And in this episode we're going to take a look at Composer. Composer is a dependency manager for PHP and is quite possibly the greatest development tool for PHP ever. So we're going to take a look at setting that up and setting up some examples of Composer in our project that we've got running in this video. If you haven't, I recommend starting at the beginning of this series so you get the foundation project and foundation concepts for PHP built up for this point, which you can do by clicking the I in the top right hand corner of this video. But assuming you've done all that, let's go ahead and get started. So first off, what is Composer? Well, according to its website, Composer is a dependency manager for PHP. So what does that mean? Well, a dependency in software development is a piece of software that someone else has written or that you've written in a different project that whatever you're working on right now, it requires that piece of software to run. It uses a bit of code written previously or written in a different project in the current project. Think of it as Legos. If you're building a Lego house, and say you've got your four walls built, you have two options. You can either spend a whole bunch of time building the roof piece by piece, or you can use a pre-built roof that you built previously to build it on top of your existing walls. That's essentially what a dependency is. It's a bit of software. It's that pre-built roof that we just reuse in different packages and different software so that we don't have to keep inventing the wheel over and over again in every project. And this allows us for much faster development, and this allows for more efficient development, and it allows us as software developers to spend more time actually writing the program that we want to have functioning, and less time writing all the background stuff that it requires to do the thing that we want it to do. So a com composer is a dependency manager for PHP. So on a um, website called Packagist, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of pre-built packages that have specific functionality for PHP. And so what Packagist does is it provides an interface and it provides sort of a back-end for accessing these packages and using them in your software. So what Composer does is say you want to use this package. This is a .env package. It reads a file and it stores the variables in that file as environment variables in PHP. Say you want to use this in your project. Well, you tell Composer that your project requires this package to function properly. Composer then, when you install all of the packages for your project, Composer will look at this package. It'll say, okay, I need to install the Jose Gonzalez slash dot env package. What does this package need? Well, this package needs m1 slash env and php. So Composer is going to go and install m1 slash env and this package. So it allows us to say, okay, I want this package. And then Composer behind the scenes handles all of the um, different software packages that your piece of kit your project requires to run. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take a look at how to install Composer and then we're going to set up a basic Composer functionality in our project using this Jose Gonzalez slash dot env package. So the first thing that we need to do is install Composer. So if you're on a common Linux distribution, so something that's based on Ubuntu for example, you can just run the command from your software um, repositories to install Composer. So for example, on Ubuntu, I could run the command sudo apt install Composer. And it'll go ahead and grab and install the Composer packages for me. Now if you're on Windows, there is a Windows installer file that I will have a link to in the video description that you can download and run on Windows and it'll set up the command line um, composer tool on your system for you. And then if you're on Mac, there is a little bit of script that Composer has written for you that you will execute in your terminal. So if you're on Mac, you can go to this link 
the link to the composer download page which will be in the video description and you will just one at a time run these four commands in your terminal so what this does is it uses PHP to download the composer installer uh, verify that it downloaded properly and set up composer on your system so if you've done all that you should have composer set up on your system so whether you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux the commands are all the same you can run Composer and you should see an output that looks like this. You should see Composer at the top, you should see the version, and then some information about the commands that you can run. So now that we've got Composer installed, we want to go ahead and open up our development environment. So this is going to be the project that we've just sort of been building on since the beginning of this series. So once we've got our development environment open, what we need to do is create the composer.json file. Now this composer.json file is sort of the central file, the central um, information point for your project that you're building. It tells Composer what packages it needs to install, so what, um, what other pieces of code that your project needs, and it tells it what versions, it gives you some information about your project if you want it to, and it's just the place where all the composer data is stored. So what we need to do is we need to create the composer.json file. So we're going to create a new file, name it composer.json, and it's going to go in the main directory of our project. Now inside this file, what we need to do is open a new set of curly braces, and that's it. Save the file and close it. The next thing that we want to do is we want to open up a terminal and what we want to do is change directories into the folder where we have our code. So we can, um, if it's stored in your documents, you want to do cd documents slash php tutorial one or whatever. So to do this, we're going to run the command composer require Jose Gonzalez forward slash dot env. When we hit enter, what it's going to do is it's going to find that composer.json file and it's going to put a little bit of text in there telling it that our project needs this package and then it's going to go and find the, re the suggested version and it's going to install the package that we want and it's also going to install all the packages that this package needs to work. So if we go line by line, we can see that's exactly what it did. It's going to use version 3.0 or higher of Jose Gonzalez forward slash dot env and then it's going to install all of the packages that Jose Gonzalez slash dot env needs to function properly. So in this case, it's m1 forward slash env, and then it installed our package, and then the command is finished. So we can go ahead and close that, and then if we look in our composer.json file now, we see we have this new entry called the require. Now require is the array where it stores the name and version of all of the packages that our project needs to function properly. So we see we've got Jose Gonzalez slash dot env. Now the other new thing in our folder that you may notice is we have this vendor directory. The vendor directory is where Composer installs all of this software too. So if we open up the vendor directory we see we have Jose Gonzalez and if we look in here we have dot env and then inside this dot env is where all of the project files for Jose Gonzalez slash dot env live. So the other and possibly most important file is inside the vendor directory and it's called autoload.php. This autoload.php file is our entry point into all of the packages we've installed. So inside this file is where Composer is going to put the functions that it needs to set up all of the packages we installed. And so to access these packages all we have to do is tell PHP that we need to use anything that's inside this autoload.php file. So for example, say we want to set up um, this .env package in our index.php file. Well up here above session start, what we need to do is we need to tell it that we need to require everything inside that autoload file. So we're going to use the require. So basically what require does is it tells PHP that it needs to import um, an entire other PHP file and we'll take a more in-depth look at require and its sort of friends um, in the next video. But we need to require a file so we get the current directory using two underscores dir followed by two underscores that gets the current directory and then we need to append a string telling it that our file is inside slash vendor 
slash autoload.php. So we need to require this autoload.php file. And what that's going to do is anytime we load this index.php page, it's going to go and run this autoload file and it's going to set up all of the packages we've installed with Composer. So now that we've loaded the Composer autoload file, we have access to all of the installed packages that we set up in our Composer file. So that means, in this case, the Jose Gonzalez slash .env. So what we can do is we can just follow the instructions on that packages page for setting it up. So what this package is going to do before we set it up is I just want to explain it. What this package does is it gets from a file in our main directory and that file is called .env. And inside this file we can put variables and these variables are specific to our computer, whatever computer we're running it what running the application on. And the reason we want to put it in the .env file is we can refer to these variables from out throughout our code in many different places. And if it changes at any point, we can just change it in this .env file, and we don't have to change it in 100 places in our code. And also, if you decide to install this app on a different computer with different um, settings, you don't have to go through the actual code to change it. You can just modify this .env configuration file, which saves you some time, and it's a lot more secure. So just for testing what we're going to do is we're going to move this server address, database name, username, and password we're going to move these into our .env file. Now a .env file doesn't use traditional PHP syntax it uses a different kind of syntax so we're going to name this mysql underscore address and then you don't need semicolons at the end and you want to use double quotes so what we're going to do is we're going to set up this um, Jose Gonzalez slash .env package to get the variables out of this .env file and load them into PHP so that we can access them from our application. So if we just follow the instructions on the packages page which is linked to in the description you can see we need to get a loader and so a loader means we need to get the loader object and the loader object is going to grab the .env file so the loader object we'll talk about objects and object oriented programming more in the next episode but basically this is just a special kind of class a PHP object that does a special job and we're loading it into this variable called loader so we see here we need to put the path to our .env so we want to get the current directory using the two underscores dir variable and we need to append so our .env is just in this current directory so slash .env so there we go that's going to give it our .env and then we're going to parse it so this is some unfamiliar syntax but when you call a dash and then a greater than sign it just means that you're accessing a function that is in this item, this object that we set here. So if you remember we defined these functions like handler. Well inside this loader object there are functions defined. There's a function called parse. And so we're just calling the parse function from this item. And we'll talk about that more in the next episode. And so once we've got all this code in here, what it's going to do is it's going to go and find this .env file and it's going to load all of these variables into the PHP environment. And the environment's just a globally accessible variable, so we can access it from anywhere in our application. So if we want to test this, we can do a var dump of an environment variable. Now, environment variables are set to the env superglobal, so that's a dollar sign underscore env. And this is an array, and so we're going to do a die after that so it stops execution. And then in here, we can go ahead and get whatever variable we want. So say we want the MySQL address, we can put that in there. And now, if we load up our web page, we see we get the MySQL address as it was set in this .env file. And say we want to get the database, well, we can do that too. We just paste that in there. And now, we get the database. So this allows us to set all of our variables in one place 
and reference them throughout our code. So what we can do is here we can replace all of these with accessors for the environment variable. And so this way we can reference all of these variables throughout our code and have them centrally set in one location where they're easy to change. So obviously the actual .env loader and the package that we set up wasn't exactly the point of this video. The point was to get you familiar with using some of the basics of Composer. And so we looked at in this video setting up our composer.json file where we tell Composer what packages our application needs to run. We set up a sample package and then we showed loading the autoload file which pulls in the packages that we installed through Composer and it gives us access to them and we demonstrated how we have access to them um, by setting up our test package. Alright guys, thanks for watching episode 9 of my PHP development tutorial series. As always, I'll be down in the comments below if you have any questions, or you need help with anything, if you want to show off what you're working on, just connect with me down there. You can also connect with me on Google+, on Twitter, via email, on my blog. Uh, links to all that stuff are down in the description below, along with links to all the resources I used in this episode. Um, also, be sure to get subscribed so that you don't miss next week's video where we're going to take a look at getting started with object-oriented programming in PHP. As always, guys, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.